Hey everyone, it's Tucka, and I'm here exploring these ruins of Arcing Fan, and I'm about to drink a Levitate Potion here so I can hover over this lava-filled lava pit I just encountered, so I can continue exploring these ruins in search of a Dwemer puzzle box, which I was tasked to retrieve by a guy named Hasfat Antibolus, who has some information I need about the Nerevarian Cult and the Sixth House Cult. Uh, and why I need that information? Well, there's a guy, another guy named Caius Cosades, who uh, is technically my superior in the Imperial Br Blades. I am a member of the Imperial uh, spy organization, the Blades. And as I get in a fight here with this guy, I try to levitate out of range, but I pretty much figure, even as I do it, that it's probably futile because the ceiling is so low here that uh, there's really I can't get out of range of this guy's hammer. And uh, really, one solid hit from that guy probably would have killed me, but fortunately, he doesn't do probably anywhere near max damage with that hammer to me uh, before I kill him. And I enter an area here that looks like a, a, a an observatory of some sort. There's a big telescope in this room, and I'm going to explore it in a bit by drinking another levitate potion. And I didn't really know that the, the Dwember had much of an interest in uh, the skies and astronomy, and maybe... Maybe that's something I just, that's uh, my lack of knowledge, my, just my basic ignorance, but as far as I know, this is the only uh, real observatory in Morrowind, and I find some normal Dwemer artifacts up here, but there's nothing really of value, it seems. Uh, even though I drink a potion to get up here, uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to be rewarded for that, and really, I don't think there's anything of, anything of value up here, so I'm going to end up drinking a few potions to get up here and get down, but uh, this whole trip over that lava pit seems to have been a waste, except for the fact that I see this, uh, I get to explore this interesting environment here, that see that telescope, and maybe I'll discover later on in my explorations, or I'll do some research later and figure out uh, exactly what it is that the Dwemer were doing building the telescopes, because I, I don't know that they were particularly interested in the skies, but like I said, it could be incorrect on that. So I'm going to get down here, and I guess I'll give a little bit more information about what I know about the Dwemer. Since we're talking about it. They existed during the uh, the first age, or the first era, I should say, and they, uh, like I said, the center of their empire was here on Vardenfell, and they, their empire, uh, I think, stretched throughout Morrowind, and I know that they uh, coexisted peacefully with the ancestors of the, of the uh, Dunmer, at least for a while. I think originally there was some conflict between them, but there's also a period of peace between the the Chimer and the Dwemer. The Chimer were the ancestors of the Dark Elves, the modern Dark Elves. And uh, when the when the Dwarven King, I think Dumak was his name, made peace with the Chimer, they uh, a sect, uh, or a, I should say a, a clan, uh, I don't know the name of the, I think it's Roken, something like that. A clan called Roken uh, uh, split off from the uh, the main Dwemer kingdom, and uh, and went to the west. So if you if you play Skyrim, you see the Dwarm, uh, Dwemer ruin, ruins in Skyrim. All those ruins are pretty much the uh, a different clan from this Dwemer clan, which might account for some of the differences in architecture that you see. Uh, these uh, Dwemer ruins here seem to be much more metallic, or it could just come down to a difference in the materials available in the, in the different areas. And I found I find a chest here. And lock it. I find some Dwemer coins, which are pretty nice. Those are these coins are worth 50 uh, gold pieces each, and I find 25 of them. So that's a pretty good find. Although, as I mentioned earlier, earlier that I have installed a mod that makes so Dwemer artifacts are considered contraband by uh, all the merchants in the game. So unless I find like a, a shady merchant that doesn't care about uh, imperial export restrictions or imperial trade. Uh, restrictions like a, maybe a thieves guild merchant or maybe I figured to probably tell Vani don't care a whole lot about Dwemer, uh, excuse me, Imperial Law if they can get away with it. So maybe when I join House Dwemer I'll be able to find someone to sell these Dwemer artifacts to. And so that's my reason why I don't loot some of those weapons I see. There's a, I think there's a Dwemer mace and maybe a spear or something in that, in that chest but I don't bother trying to loot them. And this, lock, this door here is locked, and my uh, pitiful lockpicking skill isn't enough to open that door. I think I mentioned earlier that I uh, don't have a proper lockpicking spell, or I don't have a proper opening spell, which is a spell in Morrowind, which I like, uh, in, in Oblivion and in Skyrim. 
uh, your only real option to open doors is to train up the security skill. And uh, for a lot of characters, that's just not really doesn't really make sense. Uh, I guess in, a, in in Oblivion and Skyrim, you don't technically need the the, um, the security skill if you have if your player skill is high enough. If you're good enough at good enough at the mini games, and you you find enough lock picks, then uh, in Oblivion and Skyrim, you can pretty much just you know pick your way through those locks without any real regard for your character skill. But in Morrowind here, it's all dependent. There's no little mini games for lock picking. It's all just straight character skill and the quality of your tools that you have available, and which is kind of nice in a sense. It's it, it especially since you have different options for opening at least two different options for opening doors. You have the lock picking uh, skill, and you also have the spell uh, open spell. It's an open t uh, and they both basically do the same thing. You just cast a spell and it'll open the door if, it, if, the, if this, the magnitude of the spell is good enough. And I'm going to enter, enter this uh, room here. This is going to be, I think, where I'm going to find a, the puzzle box. And But first I'm going to have to fight someone to get it. And this guy in here is, is pretty tough. I think his name is Boss. Boss something. Boss... Uh, can't see his name, and he, there he almost kills me. He gets me down to virtually, you know, a, a pretty small amount of health, so I have to retreat. And the AI again is not particularly intelligent. It's not smart enough to uh, move through those those doors. If it, if it loads into a different uh, cell, the NPCs won't chase you through it, unlike uh, the more modern Elder Scrolls games. So that's something that can be exploited as well, kind of like levitate. Levitate if you have. Uh, which I was using earlier, it's, it's kind of an overpowered ability, at least in areas that don't have very low ceilings, which I guess is the majority of, of areas, all the dungeons. Most of the dungeons have uh, fairly low ceilings, so you can't really levitate your way out of harm's way in most instances, but... Yeah, the, the AI is not smart enough to go through those doors, and I think that's something that you might be able to correct with a mod. I'll have to check that out. I think the last time I checked... Uh, though that mod was not highly compatible with some of the other other stuff I'm using, so after I get that puzzle box, I'm just gonna I I cut back to uh, the outskirts of more of uh, excuse me of Valmora here, and I'm gonna go and bring that box back to um, Hasfat and see what he knows about the cults. So, I think I was giving some history as to the the Chimer and the Dwemer. And the, the Chimer were basically the ancestors of the Dwemer. They were led here by uh, a guy named Veloth, the prophet Veloth, who uh, they were no part of the uh, the High Elven, the, the Altmer civilization, but they broke off from the Altmer and uh, settled here in Morrowind. And they, they, they at first they came into conflict with, with the Dwemer, but uh, eventually they kind of ironed out their, their, uh, their differences, at least for a while. And so now I'll talk a little bit about what the information that Hasfat gives here it gives me here in exchange for that puzzle box. He tells me he tells me at first I asked him about the sixth house. He tells me that House Dagoth is the sixth house. It's the lost house. And the first age, the uh, House Dagoth betrayed the other great houses, the other uh, I guess Dunmer houses at the time, or excuse me, Chimer houses at the time. They might have been Dunmer, but I'm pretty sure they were they were they were Chimer still. And that was during the, the War of the First Council. And they were destroyed for their treason. And they um, basically... Uh, everyone in that house was killed, either killed or assimilated into the other houses. So, uh, but if there's a sixth house cult that's active here in Morrowind, then maybe there there was there were a few more survivors than uh, Hasbet here is, is suggesting. And he tells me that uh, if I'm interested in learning more about the Sixth House, there's some books you can try to pick up, but it might be kind of find, hard to find those books because the um, the the Dunmer Temple, the the Tribunal Temple, doesn't really like uh, a lot of information about other rival religions and cults being disseminated, especially uh, particularly dark cults and cults that are in opposition to their own religion, direct opposition to their own religion. Uh, they kind of tolerate the imperial cult because uh, they don't really have much of a choice because the empire rules over Morrowind. But 
these six these uh, native these rival native cults like the Nerevarine cult and the Sixth House cult they try to uh, get, keep drive them as much into the under underground as possible. And I asked him about the Nerevarine cult as well, but he doesn't really know much about that. He tells me someone named Sharn Gro Musgob, or excuse me, Sharn Gra Musgob, knows more about that. I also asked him a little bit about the Dwemer because he kind of seems to have an interest in the Dwemer, and he gives me the name of some other ruins some other Dwemer sites in the area, and tells me I might be able to hook up with some of his friends that are doing some, some research into the Dwemer language, which as of yet hasn't really been deciphered. So I might uh, track them down later in the ruins he gives me. To, and I just asked him about some other things, but I'm going to say goodbye to him, then uh, cut back to... Uh, well, I was going to cut straight to Caius's house to deliver my report, but on the way there, this guy... Uh, intercepts me and he tells me I am a sleeper, one among thousands I bring you a message Dagoth Ur calls you, Banrin Vedas, and you cannot deny your lord the sixth house has risen and Dagoth is its glory he tells me that Dagoth Ur is the lord the father of the mountain and that when he wakes he will rise from our dreams and sweep over uh, and sweep our land clean of Enwa, which is a kind of a Dunmer uh, kind of like a, a Dunmer uh, term for outlanders, I think. Or it might just be a general uh, insult, but yeah, apparently that guy there then was a member of the Sixth House cult. Kind of a uh, strange and coincidence that I should uh, run into him right after I learn about the uh, the, the Sixth House cult, cult from Hasbat here. And here I'm just looking over the, um, the notes that Hasbat gave me to give to Caius as a part of my report. And there are the, the, the references there at the bottom, the books that I can read find out more but he doesn't really tell this this note here doesn't really say anything more than what he told me in person so it's still pretty interesting that that sleeper approached me and called me by name and told me that Dagoth Ur is calling me so that's kind of creepy so I'll kind of try to put that behind me as I report to Caius here and get my new orders which are to going to be to approach Sean Gramuzgob that Hasfat mentioned at the Balmora's Mage Mages Guild, and find out what she knows about the Nerevarine cult. And he tells me that Sharn is pretty smart for an orc, but that she's always worried that the temple's gonna bust in for good reason and throw her into a fire. So we'll see what she has against the temple uh, in the next video, and I'll uh, do whatever mission or whatever task she sets me to to find out what she knows about that Nerevarine cult. So I'll see you in a bit.